All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys how to get your InDesign file set up for your portfolio review. And uh, at this point, you guys should have like a folder with all your pieces put together, just your single pieces or have some like mock-ups, put your things into your mock-ups and just have them ready in a folder before you get started on your InDesign. That always helps a lot. And uh, I'm going to just show you guys how to set up your file for exactly this uh, purpose for the portfolio review I'm not going to show you guys how to do your designs or anything I'm just going to show you just how to get your file set up and uh, let's get started and uh, we'll be inside of InDesign inside of InDesign <laughs> and uh, I highly recommend using InDesign for this layout process because that's what it's made for and uh, we'll just go ahead and once you have InDesign open click create new and it'll pop up this uh, window for you guys to pick from. It's always easy to just go to this print tab up top here and select letter because that is the dimensions that portfolio review requested, the eight and a half by 11. And uh, once you have that selected, just, just go here and call this portfolio 2020. Just put your name the way that it was uh, requested on the, on the instructions. Right here, it's in picas right now. I have no idea how to measure in picas, so I'm just going to switch this to inches so everything here reflects in something that we know how to deal with. So, uh, width, height, 8.5 by 11. Uh, I think the request or the instructions said that you have to be in landscape orientation, so let's go ahead and click that landscape button right next to it, right under the inches panel right there. And then I think ideally they said like I forgot the amount of pieces but the max amount of pages that I think you should have should be 10 pages plus the cover page so I will just punch in 11 here for the pages and then right here we're gonna uncheck the facing pages option just so that all your pages then stack up one on top of the other just going down like that and start number that's just for numbering I'll just leave it as is and then right underneath it we have our columns margins bleed and slug sometimes it might be all tucked in like this so you might not see the whole settings so just unfold those things and we're going to change those to uh, help you guys out a little better when you're setting up your file so I personally like to use a three column grid for, that's what I use for my portfolio. Three columns or six columns really help you out. And uh, I keep the column gutter as default, which is 0 0.1667 inches. And then underneath it for the margins. I like to keep my margins 0 0.5 inches. That gives you a nice thick little border around your page. It's not all the way to the edge or anything. It just gives you a nice breathing space for you to uh, have a nice reference. Bleed and slug, uh, we're not printing this so we don't really need a bleed, but for the sake of it, I'll just put 0.125 inches onto the bleed and uh, that should basically get your whole InDesign file ready to go. And when you click create here, it'll plop up this whole page for you and it'll have three little separate grids and I'll show you guys how to uh, populate them with your pieces so that you guys can see how it's done. So in InDesign there are panels here right now and by default you should see your properties panel. If you can't uh, what I really need to see right now is the page layout. So if you go find the pages tab right there on your top panel sometimes if it's not there if it's not visible you could go to window and locate it right there under pages and once you open that up you'll see all your 11 pages so the first one is your cover page so this is where you'll put your name and whatever design or way that you want to create your cover page there so I'm gonna skip that pretend like that we've done it and jump into the second page so I'll go to the pages panel click that second page double click it and it'll give us or yeah it'll bring us down into the second page or you could just scroll it like a normal person <laughs> so uh remember that folder that we've created with all our pieces in here 
So from there, now I could start bringing in my pieces into this. I could just drag and drop them in here, and it'll pop up this little place icon where it just shows the item that you just placed in. And I like to just put it as long as it uh, clears my whole page. That's where I'd like to start. So it's kind of clicking into the random places so I just put it there and it fills up the whole page from here on we could go about uh, resizing it and reframing it so unlike Illustrator or Photoshop once you start to resize things InDesign resizes it in two ways so there's the frame inside of it and inside the frame is the picture that you place so it might just bleed out there and could be out of the frame so what I like to use is the blue the frame of it just to give a nice crop area just so that I have uh, everything in there and then once it's in there I could just double click inside of that frame and then move my piece around to uh, get it to an ideal place so another quick and easy way to place in images would be to go to your tools panel right here and from it locate the rectangle frame tool that way you could just plop in a nice little rectangle and by doing this you're basically telling uh, InDesign that it's ready to accept files into it so with that I could just easily go and locate the file that I want just drag and drop it and it'll just fill it into the space that you want you could also just right click it and then go to fitting and then you could just select fit frame proportionally and it'll just uh, fill it inside of that frame so it just see this crop area at the top that means it didn't fit it's not squishing it or anything it just fits it your uh, image into that frame that you drew uh, without having to resize it so that's a quick and easy way to do that process without just going or going around and then dragging and whatnot so from here you could see that the reason why I chose a three column grid is now I could put like fill two of these uh, columns with the uh, the content with your images with your mockups and on the third column here you could put your titles and uh, everything else on this side so for example I could just put in a little text box and put title of this and uh, obviously I would just go about making this pretty put some nice typography in there and whatnot and I would just multiply this and put all the requirements in there now I would just replicate this into uh, the other one and uh, I like to kind of alternate so that it's not just boring all the things on one side I could just bring in another image put that in there and for this one I could just plop it down on this side and here we go then now I have this whole side to put my information on and have everything ready to go and I'm all once again I'm using that three column grid I'm leaving one column for my information and another side for all your content you could also just go about taking out a whole page it's just a suggestion I could just do the whole page put your content there and then maybe draw in a nice little white box or something that you could put some some text in without being distracted on the other side so that way you have your image in one side and then you have a nice little block that shows your screen and you could just preview it by pressing W on your keyboard or if you press shift W it will show you a full size preview and then you could go up and down and take a look at your file without any guides or any hassle around so that's shift W once again to uh, get that preview and W to hide your guides and columns so that's basically how you set up your InDesign file and bring in your content place it around and uh, oh one more thing so say for instance we have we have two pieces or we have two images that we need to put in there so I would basically go about 
doing the same thing where I would just resize it, make myself a nice frame, and put my artwork inside of it. And then if I want to put another image in there, I would just go ahead and uh, bring that image in and then place it and then use your uh, vision or whatever style that you want to use and just plop it around somewhere and that way you have two images or multiple images and then you could use this area to plop in your information about your piece and uh, that's about it if you guys want any more help reach out to me I'm on discord might be in your classes with you guys and uh, yeah good luck on your submissions and uh, have a good uh, good time <laughs>